we're back. We are attempting this again. We Come are hell going or high for water. A second time. Um, for the benefit of the record and people watching in the now and the, the soon to be now, we had some problems on Tuesday when we tried to go through this. Xfinity uh, decided it was not to be so. So we're going to start again. We didn't get very far. In fact, only an um, hour in. Well, an hour of like Mostly an hour problems. of sitting here, but yeah, I, I would argue maybe twenty minutes of actual gameplay. Forty-five minutes on the clock, and a lot of that was spent. Well, forty-six. You can read the numbers. Uh, but most of that spent not uh, not actually doing much. So we're just gonna start from the beginning, start fresh, back into the joy. So I do appreciate that this game starts exactly the same as the first one. Same music and same. So much that you may it. question if you're playing the right game. Well, from what I, what I've seen, I've been watching H Bomber Guy's video in pieces going forward, and part of the audio design is using the same tracks at varying speeds and pitches to try to, like, make you have to question your own memory of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Which pretty good at that. Seemed very, like, f more so fitting for Lisa the first from the little bit of I did play of it. But also, you know, puts you in that that mindset of someone who can't really trust their surroundings and, and apparently what your own player character is saying and doing. Yes. Well, I guess Brad is maybe not an unreliable narrator, but a selective narrator. Yeah. You know, we only saw certain parts of his past. We were made to be pretty sympathetic to him. Yes. And and it is possible but that now, now we're in Buddy's Buddy's perspective though. Yes. We're going to see the things that were were more important that stood out in her memory. And I would argue that there is a case to be made for Brad being a sympathetic character through a tragic lens. Oh yeah, sure. You can make that um, argument. Because as we were, you know, we were we were discussing at the end of the main game, you know, this is this is a tragedy in the Greek sense of the word. Um, uh, you know, a, a great man brought low by his own hubris, sort of a story, and. Um, I would I would argue that you know there is there is a case to be made for you know Brad's intentions, maybe not necessarily his methods, unless there's more to find out about the man that I haven't yet. For instance, this. This is just the first thing the DLC shows you. This is what they want you to know right away. <laughs> Um, I think this is a super powerful opening. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. Like, there is something it, to be said. This recontextualizes oh, everything you think about Brad. Yes. Initially, he was he was just the the weekend dad who was, you know, the fun time. Yay, you can do makeup on my face and draw paintings. And he was that dad. <laughs> yes. But he was, he was also, also this dad. <laughs> Because on the one hand, Buddy is likely to be targeted in a way that no one else is going to be, and more intensely. So these She's sorts of survival know how skills, to protect herself. exactly, arguably more so than anybody else on the planet right now. And Brad understands this so much that he has abandoned the aesthetic that his entire karate style is based around. Yeah, yeah. This is just, there is no flair to this. There is no art to this. It is just stabbing people in the throat so they don't hurt you. There's also possibly, like, he doesn't have the time. Like, her... No, he her, doesn't really have the time. Her life is in danger already as of 
several years ago at this point. Like mm-hmm. he does not have like she does not have the time to learn Armstrong style uh bespoke karate trademark sure. copyright. Um she needs something to protect herself now. It's still horrible. <laughs> it's still pretty horrible. <laughs> hey, child, here, take this knife. Kill that man. Uh, Yes, yes, he's keeping her down in the basement. One more reprise of the main theme here. So now do you have an idea of who is talking here? So, based on the joyless ending, I suspect this is Yato and Buzzo. Okay. The top, the text at the top of the screen being Yato, the text at the bottom of the screen being Buzzo. I still haven't done the pain run, so I don't really have much context for who Dr. Yato is. He seems to be the man who invented joy for Mm -hmm. military applications. Yeah, that's all we know. But that's about all I got. Oh, he has a daughter named Nancy. Okay. So another female exists in the world. He's going to be doing experiments on her. And Buzzo, of all people, was the one who said, dude, that might be a little much. Buzzo said, hey, dude, that's weird. So Buzzo having something of restraint and conscience. Because, you know, we knew the game was going to make me, you know, vendetta myself at Buzzo so hard. And then do something to pull the rug out and make me feel bad about that. Like, I knew that as I was getting angry, I still don't care. Yeah, you know. You know it's coming. And then here we are at the end of the main game. Here we are. Starting... Right where we left off. Yes. Oh, I didn't catch that. He calls her Lisa. He calls her Lisa. So. He doesn't know what the fuck is going on right now. Yeah, he's completely, like... He's seeing what he wants to see. Yeah. Okay, so. We do have timed hits. Watch out, he knows about timed hits. Oh no! You hit that as you did it. Otherwise, I'd sound like a fool. It's okay. I've I've learned. I've trained on the the. I've been playing Mother Three since Tuesday to to train my time really? hit fingers. No, Is that's that an true? absolute. That's an absolute okay. lie. Um, okay. I've been playing. That's Iron really Man. hard to do. Honestly. I was never Mother great. At time hits. No, because they're off sync. <laughs> they're off sync, and you've got to chain them forever in order to get any like. Like, notable damage upgrades. Yeah. But it is it is nice to see that they've, you know, they've they've added some new features. They, Austin Jorgensen, the the the, 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 the single person. Mm-hmm. This is all done by one person. Jeez, that is still like mind blowing. Pretty impressive. <laughs> Like, you see stuff like Cave Story, and, like, you know, that's impressive, but, you know, it's still just... It's a fairly simple story, and it's using some fairly simple assets, and it's time-consuming, but, like... I think they're very different games. Like, in that game, like, I think a lot of it came from tooling around with the physics and stuff. Yeah, and this one, there's there's some very high-concept story going on, there's some innovative... There's, like, very innovative gameplay, and... Uh, ways of drawing the player in in ways that RPGs haven't 
before. Buzz all I was talking. I was doing the analysis, but I guess I should play the game. Except for that time I cut your nipple off, but we don't want to talk about that. Welcome to hell, sunshine. And some fantastic work with the music is what I was going to say before Buzzo interrupted me. We so got we do have. To our left. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. Just the just the uh, remains of the last battle from the first game. Yes, and also, um, you pointed it out in the main game that Rando falls into this Jesus Christ pose. Mm -hmm. This is also Brad's default sitting pose. It was just difficult to recognize <laughs> because he never had arms. But I did notice on the um, the painless run. I was doing, or the joyless run that I was doing, that when and when he had both arms, he would sometimes sit in this pose, um, very similar to what Rando's got happening here. It's more noticeable on the boat at the end of Area Three, like when Tardy is um, flapping the fan. Yes. And I had one arm at that point, so I, I was able to go, Oh! That's a neat little neat little uh, visual connection between those two characters. Uh, so we've got shift is the run key. And like the bicycle, we hold shift, it'll take us off the edge and we jump. But this time we jump two squares instead of just one. We don't get one from here. We'll get one soon. Up, up. Watch those knees. Watch them. I mean, it's extremely true. Have you tried doing anything with your knees lately? It's awful. Yeah, no, you... Taking a landing a... is very difficult. Tried doing a squat? Ugh. <laughs> I do 100 squats, 100 sit-ups. Every day. 100 push-ups every day. Here he is, the golden yes. opportunist. Bolo Bagaguchi or something or other. Yeah, this was this was the point the last time we tried it where I, I made the comment that what was he literally watching with binoculars for Rando to get taken out so he could take his position at the top of the heap? Yes. And I had also watched the trailer, which constitutes mainly of this scene, except... That is a horrible line. Like, that is a yeah. very evocative line, and I hate it. It's really it. fucking awful. The trailer cuts out at this text box. And so I spent a few days going, who is telling them to stop? Expecting, like, Brad Monster to come out. But it's not Brad Monster. Or Buzzo. But no, it was neither. It is Rando! <laughs> kind of my favorite character in retrospect from the, la from the main game. Yeah, he is actually a pretty well-developed character when you think about it. Considering how little screen time he got, it was very, very effectively used. Oh, shoot! Oh, no! It's Rando! As scummy as this guy is, I love his theme song. It's pretty good. Also, his legs are freaking me out. Like, he's in a permanent squat, 
and he's got yeah. a little spindly. Like everybody's kind of got like little little poker foots, but his are more spidery than most. <laughs> Speaking of spidery, get fucked. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one of the sound, that's my sound effect for getting bit. Oh. It's the joy sound in this game. And yeah, hey, you're kind of banged up. Oh, I guess she bandaged, bandaged him up. Yeah, look at that. I, did, that I nice. didn't notice that. Well, he bandaged her, and she bandaged him, and, you know, they have a they have a mutual, a mutually beneficial system going on now. Actually, I don't know who got Buddy those bandages. She might have put them on herself. I'm trying to think. Aganelli scratched her face. She ran away. Next time we yeah, saw she, her, I think she, she had ran bandages. In, no, she ran into the crowd of people. Or she ran into the crowd of the rando crowd and then talked to rando. Brad gave her a poncho, but didn't give her any bandages. Oh, yeah. She must have done that herself then, maybe. If I'm, like, really nitpicking about it and, like, if I really go into it by what I remember bit by bit. But yeah, most important thing here. Sticky just told her stories and cried a lot. Probably yes. told her about biology and shit. Sure. The the uh the implications that made me really, really mad at Sticky turned out to not be true. Just a lot of selective word choice. Yep. A lot of people really hate Sticky and Rick in this game in, in the previous game, and it's kinda like mm, they they weren't the bad guys here. Well, Rick Rick, we still don't have any, like, anything confirmed on Sticky. Eh, Sticky had Rick a couple of... Rick, yeah, Rick's... I mean, they're both dead at this point, but... Sticky had a couple of very choice lines... In Brad's brain. They were in the massive Diglett fight when Brad was tripping balls, yeah. It could... Like, that could... That could have been not real. That could have been a hallucination. Exactly. That could have been Brad anticipating what he thought he wanted to hear and the drugs in his brain going, sounds great. Let's go with that, boss. Because Sticky very definitively in that, like, before that fight says something along the lines of she wanted it. Actually, yeah. it might have been verbatim. No, that was verbatim. You got it right. Yeah. And, and when you like, take it that way, there's only one way you can look at it, really. Yeah, no, it's a very loaded statement designed to make you angry at the 30-foot diglet. <sighs> Rando needs help from his friends. Man, even Rando doesn't know any better. Yeah, and I'm going to stick with the decision I made last time because I like Rando and I trust Rando. But Buddy doesn't have as much experience with Rando as I do, and wouldn't have the uh, wouldn't necessarily feel the same way. Yeah. This is fine. It changes yeah. less than you think. Yes, some rations and a mask. Which is on me to be diligent about. Yes. If you do not talk to people with that mask on, they will react exactly as you think they will. Oh, and right. that could have consequences. And that could have some extreme consequences, as we've seen the lengths some people will go to. <coughs> yeah, see, we're already halfway to where we were. Yep. Aha! Checkpoint Friends. number one. So yeah, this was not the thing that attacked us, but it's no. a different one. There are... This is the third one we've seen of this big, like, spidery form 
I, I tried on my joyless run to look at the mutants and see if there was any kind of like thematic correlation between, you know, the, the kind of characters and the kind of, you know, monsters they turned into. And there wasn't a whole lot to go on. Like Punkard, Not... I think, was the only one we see in both states. Yeah, you're right. That's the only one you get to see beforehand. It's the and... only thing that like even tells you that humans will turn into those things. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I did not. I did not catch what was going on at the time. You usually don't. But yeah, I don't really think there's much of a. It just seems to be like, and here's a cool body horror monster idea that Jorgensen had, and here it is. And it drops some joy. Don't think about that. Just take it. Yeah, just take the drugs. <laughs> just think of how long you how long you picked up the joy. It's like, yeah, joy. All right. Woo. Well, yeah, it didn't occur to me what was going on and, you know, intended. The, the longer you spend in this world, the more you start to question. And yeah, maybe we can keep Buddy alive this time. It, it, it may go wrong, but if we heal her up. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely Buddy died the first time we did this. So we're going to maybe not do that. I don't know if this is the most dangerous one, but these tall fellas tend to be, so... And then... Oh, that's right. Rando doesn't have any head slides yet, so groups are nope. not as easy. Can't slide on your face when you've got that horn. Nice. Alright, one down. That's not good. That's a problem. Though a totally valid option for this fight, join up, buddy. Yeah. Now she feels nothing. So. <clears throat> I have thoughts about that, but I I obviously don't have too strong thoughts about that because I just did it, but they'll they'll come out in a second. What getting a child addicted to drugs or getting a child addicted to drugs that will turn into a flesh monster? Uh the second one. <laughs> Even with Joy, she still takes damage. I mean, she's 10. Yeah. <laughs> but now she can see the carotid artery. She can just see it. Just pumping. Nice. Okay. Nice. I think we're three for three on our time hits right now. We might do this. Yes. In fact, no, this is a really hard fight. This is supposed to be hard. Ah, uh, missed it, but still dead. Still got him. You're still dead. All right. All we got left is Big Pancake Norton's cousin. <laughs> Good enough. Good enough. So. Two, two levels. levels for Buddy. Sweet. I have a number of thoughts about what just happened, but I'm going to wait two more screens, if I remember correctly. So now this conversation makes more sense. Where did you learn that? Brad taught me. Brad. <laughs> He never showed me anything like that. Oh, this is interesting. We have two... We have two surrogate children. Of the same sad dad. Oh, so you you know that he's... A, a, he also adopted Dusty? Uh, I didn't know that. Like, but... Yeah. I guess was, now that I revealed that. Yeah, they're, they're also surrogate children of Brad. Like, like Dusty was the um, Dusty was the little Charlie Bucket 
kid who stuttered and hid in the bushes and watched the, mm-hmm. the karate lessons. So uh, I was just going off the fact that, you know, they had that kind of student master. And Brad is like very clearly like just aching to be a paternal figure to anyone that will you know be around. So, OK, so, yeah, now I, I guess I should say there's a little more to it than that for 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 uh, Rando's story. Fair. I know there is um I know there's a third ending of the main game I haven't seen yet. Yes. Um, that doesn't uh, it doesn't say that explicitly though. So nothing in the game really says that explicitly. The uh the the achievement for seeing it is something called like Birth of the Red Skull or something along those lines. Yeah. Enough to and it, it, it does have something to do with Rando though. It's pretty good. I would highly recommend seeing it. All right. Here's here's the big here's deal. the big list. Rando is totally separate from this hierarchy. Oh, yeah. Cardi Hernandez. It says Cardi. I guess he spray painted over it because his name is Farty Hernandez. Well, the red underneath, the whoever painted the list no, appears to have I'm written sorry. Lardy. It's Lardy Hernandez. That's his name. And then someone spray painted over it to change it to Cardi Hernandez. And I'm not sure. That would imply that either their actual name is Lardy and they want to change it or that the person who wrote this list wrote it as a fat joke and they their right. actual name is Cardi and they came to correct that. Either way... I think, his, I think his actual name is Lardy. Possible. I don't know. I haven't gotten that far. But either way, we have another Hernandez to kill. Yes, we do. <laughs> also, at the bottom, you can see Hawk Hollywood, Han Tsunami, and Buff Van Dyke, who we took care of in the last game, all dead now. Woo! Buff Van Dyke not necessarily having to die, if he wasn't in your final party or didn't die of something beforehand, but... That would, I guess, I imply that everyone you didn't take with you, like everyone that wasn't in your final three, also died? Yes, I assume they were all dead. And, uh, let's see. Dice Mahone, that name sounds familiar. Brand new, I think. There wasn't any, there weren't any characters named Mahone in the main game? That's ringing nope. a bell for some reason. No Mahoney's. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, aside from Hernandez, these are all new names. Oh, and you'll be happy to know when I fought Hawk Hollywood in the Joyless Run, he did the, um, the, yeah, the regen he, he move. Yeah, he did the move. I can see what you were talking about now. That fight was a bit more of a pain in the ass. It takes way longer when he has that regen. And, um, Bloodiest Mountain did the, uh, meteor move you were talking about. Oh, okay, cool. The, the meteor strike on the whole party? Oh, okay. I guess it's really rare then. Yeah, he only did it once. And it only did like 500 damage per person, which, you know, was not But it still hit everybody. Yeah, I had birdie, so I just did the, 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 the all heal and it, you know, took care of it. But I can imagine if he did that consistently, it would be a pain in the ass to have to keep up with. Many days later. So yeah, this whole situation goes great. Yeah, yeah. Rando takes us to a place, and then... These dudes just like, he's gonna be so angry. Like, it doesn't matter, dude, we gotta tell him. But it'll be, he'll, he'll be so upset if we tell him. 
Think of how upset he'll be if we don't tell him and when he finds out. Alright, fine. Rando. And we got Master Bob Friday. Guy Master Funk. Seller of incredibly useless and expensive booklets. And these two other guys are not otherwise uh, known characters other than... Yeah, but they've got the same... Like, I think they might be all from Karate Village. Yeah, they're wearing the same... I don't know if they were actual sprites in the village, but they are wearing the same the same uniform. It's I like always a took this as like a bunch of robe. karate men at the end of the world trying to, like, you know, move things <laughs> along. Trying to do the right thing, but obviously not doing it very well. Yeah. Like, Friday is more of a, like, a con artist, um, yeah. what you call a motivational speaker than anything else. Yeah, he kind of is. Because I did buy his pamphlet, and it was a thousand mags that just said, like, try your best. I was like, great. Do your best. I'm going to save scum and get my money back then. <laughs> That didn't go well. Yeah, well, maybe because you were knocking her out and tying her up. That would make me violent. No, say no more. Fuck Dale. Dale's dead now. So yeah, Rando is not exactly recovered from, from the beating Brad gave him. No, it seems like Rando mm -hmm. is like permanently like hobbled from his, his experience here. I could explain why we've only got the four moves to start, despite the fact we're at like level 19. Yeah, you, you do that, son. See how that goes for you. So yeah, now now all we have is this this crawl. Oh yeah, no, Brad is I think my favorite like my favorite moment of the first game is is all of the the soldiers of the Rando army commenting on like the amount just like what a monster Brad has become but since we're seeing it from Brad's perspective we can't see that and then that jump cut back to the screen where he's just full of arrows and a sword and like just taking all of this punishment nobody's even noticed like yeah Brad is ridiculously strong that was that was one of the like the the best uses of interface to tell the story in, in that game, if you ask me. Yeah, he also didn't. He also was just not feeling pain anymore. Yeah. After after he became a failure, you might have noticed he stopped taking damage from falling off cliffs. He just stopped I did. feeling pain. I did notice that, and his health doubles. Yeah, he just has all this health now. It doesn't matter anymore. He can. Because there is no tomorrow, so do whatever you want to me. I don't care. Yeah. He's been dead for 35 years. <laughs> yes. Oh, that whole that whole sequence is just so good. That it's whole sequence is fantastic. It's, it's like oh, one God. of my favorite things I've seen in the game. Also, I like this part, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where we just crawl into here, and, and she has fucking eviscerated everybody. Buddy's just killed two people, and... Uh, Fry Master Bob away. Day has just left. Yeah. <laughs> Fry Master Bob Day, yeah, he's gone. Mm. 
<clears throat> and so here is... we get in. Go ahead. Yeah, this, this is super important just to get into her mindset that she's I everybody like I I spent my entire life locked up in a basement. This is what everyone wants to do to me. Why does everyone want to do this to me? Yeah, this is not happening again. And Buddy very quickly finds purpose in life. <clears throat> Rando lies though. Yeah, he just said these weren't his friends. I mean, it's a lie he's not likely to get caught in, but I I can picture Rando in this moment being terrified for his life right now. Yes. <clears throat> I will I will give him that lie. Then we get to work. So if I remember correctly, I think this is one of the students from the flashback. Yes. But not Rando. Uh... This fellow. I also called slight bullshit on that stick and rope being able to hold Brad, even in this state, <laughs> but whatever. <gasps> That's Buzzo! That's Buzzo. I didn't recognize him out of the suit. But He doesn't have the smile right now. But if that conversation at the beginning was Yato and Buzzo, like like in the ending of the Joyless run, he referred to your pet. Yeah, your pet. The thing oh. you've got on a, on a fucking leash right now. Yes. Okay. So that's Buzzo. Buzzo was one of Brad's students. Yes. Okay. Some pieces are coming into play now. Apparently, Buzzo also has nightmares. Okay. So earlier, when I had very little compunction about just giving a child drugs that may or may not one day turn her into a mutant blob of flesh and blades... Um, if this is her goal, fuck it. She's going to need that. <laughs> She's 10. Yes. She doesn't seem concerned with the long term right now. Nah, there's no scars on my body, motherfucker. Ha ah, ha. I sacrificed lives. Ha ah. You're acting crazy. Don't say that to the person who could gut you. Don't say that to the person who is fucking crazy. <laughs> So we have three of Brad's surrogate children all in this power struggle now. Yes. <clears throat> if I knew enough about psychoanalytics, I could probably find the id, ego, super ego allocations here. Somewhat against his will. So, the reason, the other reason that having Buddy join up in that fight was, you know, she needs it. But, based on this level distribution we have here, Buddy is 7. Rando is 19. Buddy wants to become Warrior Queen of the Wastes. Yes. A level 7 character is not going to become Warrior Queen of the Wastes. So, we have... We have, uh... 
I don't know if you would call it the main goal. Like, the main goal is kill the people on the list, but the side goal is, like, we need to make sure Buddy is strong enough to do that, so we need to keep her alive, soaking up as much XP as possible. Yes, that's true. Is where I'm... is where my head's at with it. We've seen Buddy get two levels already, and it was a dramatic increase. Her stat growths are insane. Yes. So we need to... We can't afford to let her get taken out and Rando to be the only one leveling up. I mean, as long as you're aware of that, you can keep her a lot. You, you can, like, see it coming ahead of time. And so campfires will heal Buddy, but not Rando. Yes. And this doesn't seem to be something we have a choice in. Like, this is how it be. Yeah, pretty much. Rando... Rando will watch guard. Here we are at the hub. Yep, here we are. And this is about as far as we got last time. You're not hey. wearing your mask. I'm not wearing my mask. The connection stable. <laughs> oh god, don't don't jinx it. Just go. <laughs> don't fucking jinx it. <laughs> That was another thing I noticed playing through the second time. Stuff will follow you and affect you, particularly um, the wax candles and beer bottles. Your shadow will change as you walk past them and the ambient light will mm -hmm. fluctuate. It's really cool. <laughs> Piss! Damn! All right. You ever see that video that... uh? I can't. I don't know what nationality the guy is or ethnicity, but just the guy driving by a, a flaming car wreck, listening to the cranberries. <laughs> Holy shit! What is going on? No. Yes. I'll send it to you later. It's a really oh, dumb video. In tone, it kind of reminds me of the one where, um, the hillbilly guy who apparently lives with his mom, there's two elk fighting on his front lawn, and he's recording it with his phone, he's just screaming like, HOLY SHIT MOM, YOU GOTTA CHECK THIS OUT, THERE'S A FUCKING MOOSE OR SOMETHING ON THE LAWN! Those are always funny, like, my favorite one of those is the classic, MOM, THERE'S A WEIRD FUCKING CAT OUTSIDE! <laughs> That's a classic, but I think that was that was planned because that cat was owned by them. That's an extremely weird looking cat. I mean, I'm not saying that the elf thing would have been planned. It would have just taken a fair no, amount of planning. No, that's genuine. That's the kind of thing you would just see in your backyard. Like... Deer and elk and shit are more dangerous than people ever want to, like, see Bambi and they're all so cute in nature. Like, nah. No, they're fuck. they'll fucking charge you if they're mad at you. A fucking buck has got 12 swords on its head and is horny enough that it'll murder anything that it can't have sex with. Like... You got the and Dunk Brothers. The Dunk Brothers is dead. And moose are unkillable fucking murder machines like no one has ever actually seen a moose and lived nature documentaries are lying to you okay now we are on the track to fight a few dudes yes we are taking this truck on our way to to lardy's house oh, carjacker have enough stabs. Oh, her basic stab is in the time limit. Okay. This steel drum music is a bit discordant with what's going on.
And yes, it's very fun that Rando is both driving the truck and able to fight. <laughs> Did you hear the uh, the Death Grips version of this song? No, I don't think if it's I, really good. If Culture I did, shock. it would have been on your um, it would have been on your your screensaver, your your pre-show, and uh, I wouldn't I didn't recognize it. Mm. <laughs> the best part about it is that every time when you put things into RPG Maker and you change the speed of them in RPG Maker, it will also change the speed of whatever file you jump in there. Oh, really? So, yeah. So, when you ride uh, Shardy's body at the end of Painful, mm -hmm. it plays at half speed, and it's really goddamn funny. It's so good. That's what everybody is quoting in chat right now. Culture shock, future shock, fuck yourself, chuck yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was curious, but I didn't want to ask and reveal my ignorance and sound like a fool. No, it's just a really good song. <laughs> so Fred Doopy is still in midair and... Uh, <laughs> fucking dead now. Yeah, so I was afraid where we got to last stream. Yes. Yes. This is as far as we got before everything went to hell. Uh, and I was afraid that Rando being in the driver's seat meant Buddy was going to be fighting alone for all these Man. carjackings. So that was good. That was revealing. Let's take the truck in the cave. I like how the music is. Uh, hey, buddy. I like how the music is <laughs> subdued because we're in a cave now. All right, back outside. <laughs> Woo hoo, Wahoo, McMillan. <laughs> Bury me with my nudie mags. Oh, man, not in this economy. Bury me with my nudie mags. In this economy, I'm taking your nudie mags and I'm buying dinner. Yeah. All right, here we go. What do you mean, here we go? I am ignorant of what happens next. <gasps> Soup's on, baby. It's Gary! <laughs> and this fucking music. Uh, this is uh, this this is a fan favorite. This song. I don't. What do you call say. it? Yodel core? It's, uh, this is 666 Kill Chuck. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no. Buddy. That's the most dangerous I've ever seen, uh, Gary B. Buddy, uh, here, eat this horse meat. Don't die to Gary. <laughs> We can't, we can't allow the shame of dying to Gary the Hot Soup. Okay, that was a good move. I've been doing the machine gun fists out of my love of a certain fast, or a certain uh, chain of convenience stores, but it's not, it's not the best move. It's okay. Depends it's okay. Fireball is better, though. Fireball can sometimes be better, not all the time. Uh, Wawa is an extra hit, so you've got an extra, some extra damage in there. Sure. And he's already burning right now, because fire, fireball adds the burning, but you can yes. only burn one. So, yeah, back to Wawa. Oh, he oh, doesn't good. have enough points. The soup will, the never, soup will die. never die. Bye, Gary, you piece of shit. I'm glad I ruined your entire industry. Ah, he's fine. He's got a weird stance. He seems like he would not... Like he would be a literal pushover in a fight. <laughs> yeah, right? 
We can turn back now. It's not too Stop. late. Forward. I extremely like this dynamic. <laughs> Just little girl that's like, nope, time for blood. Oh, by the way. Got some TNT. That nice we free TNT. That the game would not let me pass until I picked it up. Oh, hey, you're the Hernandez who joined the men's hair club, I see. Are you Lardy? You can't talk to me like that. She seems to think she can. I mean, he. Little boy. Here we go. Alright. This might be my Hernandez. favorite song. This is good. Oh. That's what no you meant when you said he's out of points. Yes, you should fix that. You got rations. It's a good move right now. You were at half health. We are fine. Wow. I'm sorry. A Hernandez should not be scaring me right now. I know, right? I've had, a, I've had issues with this guy before. Just a little bit. Like, way more than I should have. Oh, shit. Wow. All right. I really appreciate this execute safety net. It's saved me from wasting turns a lot. Yeah, it's very smart. There we go. Right, I'm not fucking around. That's what I Jump just said, Larry. Whoa! Okay! Okay, you know what? Where's the TNT? Damn it! It's Fine. a plot item. Nine. Okay. Fucking peanuts, apparently. <laughs> Fine. You bought your gun from the same person who sold Dante his. <laughs> I think that's a really good deal, honestly. Oh, and he can spread that damage out over both of them. Okay, well, this is not the game. I think you were more threatening before the guns. He was, actually. No, I like this fight a bunch. It's not a real fight, but it's funny as hell. It is, it is uh... Interesting to note that this person was not just on the list, but more than halfway up the list. More than halfway up the list. Hi, Lardy. Your fabulous hair. Good, good. Very good. Two levels for Buddy. Five points in luck, four points in attack. Yeah, okay. Seven points in agility and a new skill. This is this is good. <laughs> yeah, but uh The Hernandez has helped a lot of people. Yeah, you wonder what they were doing. They were the suppliers. 
Is Kansas going to starve to death now because of us? Maybe. Alright, buddy. Also, you... yeah, due to the <laughs> due to the like uh, the weird way this game is audio balanced, like battles are so loud, so we may actually need to yell over them a little bit. Yeah, I I try to um limit my conversation during fights, but um That's a very loud fight that happens that was against, a very against loud Lardy. So I don't know how I feel about this move. Yeah, you don't have to use it, but it's there. Yeah, I mean, if nothing else, it it um it speaks to the Buddy's growing, living. yeah, and Buddy's growing nihilism and what she's willing to do to achieve her goals. One down. Several to go. Yeah, every time you defeat one, you will end up back at the list and have to run back to the hub, but... But we do get to walk past this every time. But we do get to walk past the uh, campfire. And we should. I got a nice apple ginger Rattler here. Ooh, that sounds lovely. Rattler is kind of like a lager. It's like, it's... No, it's a Rattler apple ginger lager. But in my experience, a Rattler is like more of a soda. I'm not familiar with beer. the term Rattler, but apple ginger is a good flavor combination. It's very mild, too, so it's not overpowering, and that's really important. Yeah, ginger being so strong and apple being kind of light, you need to you need to balance the ginger down to make sure that you know both of them are in the in the flavor profile. I think they legit did, honestly. Nice. I don't think she Ran would, Rando. Rando, come on. <laughs> you've got to you've got to have a better approach than this. You keep trying this, she's just going to slit your throat and move on. I mean, he's speaking from experience. Sure. Her experience is different. Also true. We've never actually, like... <laughs> Hang on, can we just appreciate... This is my normal. Yeah. Go on, what were you going to say? Um, I was going to say, technically it is a question. It never really occurred to me, just because it's the inciting incident, but, like, Brad found a baby in a field. That's not how babies... No, it's not. There, there is, there is, there are chapters previous to this story how a baby ended up in a field. I don't know if it's important. I don't necessarily think we need to know, like, until now, that the game is kind of hinting at that being, you know, something that's relevant. That was a bit mean, buddy. Oh, God. <laughs> well, all my blood just turned to glass. Like, Rando is just, I don't know what to do with this child. How can I get this child to stop murdering people? <laughs> How's our health looking? Are there any, are there any self-help? Eh, we're doing all right. Okay, yeah. Rando maybe. can tank a bunch of damage. Yeah, we got 87 maybe. mags. We do have that area that you didn't check out this run. We got a lot of branches. Um... There was an area you checked out the first run that you didn't check out the second. I don't remember, so I'm going to go here. Because this feels like where my natural instinct would take me, because it's starting from the bottom and working up. But there's nothing. Nope, can't jump up that way. But there's a generator over there. There's a generator over there, and that'll be useful later once we can get to it. And we can jump back this way from there. So that's good to know. Don't walk off the cliff. 
that was another thing during my joy my my joyless run i got so much worse at not walking off cliffs oh yeah when you care about it less you tend to do it way more Oh. What's going on? I don't understand. What is going on? Do you have any thoughts about that screen? Um, on who wrote that on the wall? Just in general. Why are the clouds diagonal? Why are they diagonal? I did not notice that before. That is odd. What is That's going why on? That's what they were talking about. You don't have to answer this question because this is just where my brain is right now. It'd be very strange, but are we in a Truman Show situation? You don't necessarily you, have to answer that. You don't want me to answer that. Okay. Yeah, but... That would be an extremely fucked up situation, though. Like someone put a bunch, like took a bunch of men, made them think that the world had ended, that women were gone, locked them in a, a self-contained area to let them play out this lifestyle, and just yeah, watched gave them what like happened? A thousand, a, yeah, just gave them, like, a bunch of land to roam around in, and, oh, man. That'd be my incredibly fucked up. That would be very fucked up. My thought process being the diagonal of those clouds is basically a 45 degree, right? If that were to meet yes. the ground and then create, uh, if you were to extrapolate that, that would be a hexagon shape and just big rooms of, of fractal hexagons is, is just super sci-fi code for, you know, we're in a holodeck situation. <laughs> so that's, that's where all of that thought comes from. That might yeah. be me just watching way too much fucking Star Trek. Um, but I mean, and, there's Ender's something weird going on here. But something weird is going on. Matrix also. Shit like that. Um, so, you know, that's just... Oh, right. We can't get to that rope. That'd be fucked up. Buddy doesn't seem to take falling damage. just the way Buddy uh, uh, Brad did. I think this would have been a 10-point damage drop for Brad. Yes. But, like... Have you ever seen kids play... They just oh, fucking yeah, throw, they're indestructible. They just throw themselves around and shit. Like, I used to do that when I was younger, and then, like, I think about it now, like, you, like, throw yourself rolling down a hill like that scene in The Princess Bride. Like, all I can think of now is how much that would suck the next morning. But, yeah, just do it all the fucking time. Why not? Bottle. Bottle. Tea. Ah, right. Okay. Moving on. Okay. So, so yeah, with the mask on, we can uh, patronize all the shops and stuff. Okay. I am curious. Hello, welcome back to Lisa. I'm the voice of Doug. Okay, let's play Lisa. I've heard so much of that in the last few days. Did you watch those videos? Oh, nice. I've been watching them while, like, you know, they become my, like, doing the dishes and cleaning the apartment, you know, background noise kind of stuff. Okay. Where? Uh, I guess we haven't found a crow in this area. Oh, hi. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah, this area. This weird Devo post-apocalyptic whistle core. You can just hang out and listen to this. It just goes on for a while. I also noticed that the um, the four guys in bikinis, the one on the very far left, is um, 
Salvation Black's dad's new thin-hipped son. <laughs> sure, they might have reused this sprite somewhere. Uh, and the one on the far left with... Uh... You my new... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. The one on the far left was the one... Um... With the, oh, the Mario uh, and Luigi guys, yeah. Yeah, the one that's like, fuck off, dude, we're busy here. Uh, <laughs> there we go. I wasn't expecting them to start dancing. <laughs> the song hadn't started up yet. Uh, speaking of music stuff, it was thanks to watching your LP. I never realized that um, if you go back to Widley 2 Diddley's house after you fight the men's hair club, he commits suicide. Yes, he just hangs himself. That was shocking. I ended an episode on that, and then I started with this very special intro. <laughs> it was very special for the LP. There were there were a couple of things that I hadn't I I never got around to seeing that being one of them um the guy at the beginning when you're playing as young Brad like to the far right yeah that's talking dude. about There's a guy like, there who's like it's perfect yeah I I what's uh, that I'm, dude doing I don't know I just assumed uh, like oh that's how oh my god. Huh? <laughs> Sticky keys just tried to activate because I pushed shift too many times. Oh, okay. I was like, what What happened there? <laughs> no, that was... That was I apparently started running too many times in quick succession and Windows decided it had something to say. Has anyone ever actually used sticky keys? Nobody uses sticky keys. But it apparently thinks you want to. Also, Lardy sucks, but is there any need to go back through that hole? Well, I don't know if you really could, because the truck's gone at this point, huh? There's one thing you can do. Uh, try going in there right now. Yeah, this dude, try taking off. <laughs> Sup, Mr. T? There we go. All right. Well, we are going to less snatcher. Ooh, he's resistant to fire. your big attack. I'm not worried. Yeah, over here the truck is gone. Yep. And I mean, I suppose I could run this whole way. Oh, weird. Yeah, your stream just went down. Gonna just hold and pretend that didn't happen. Yeah, sorry to, like, bring that up, but I figured you'd want to know as soon as it happens. Sure, sure. When did it happen? All like, good! No problems! <laughs> Zero problems! Ugh, oh, what a pain in the ass. You mean, what a joy! What a joy. Uh, we've also got the car keys, so we can go back to the hub at any point. Sure. And yeah, there's the Joy Mutant here, but we can't fight him. Yeah. And Les, Les Snatcher had a, um, 
an entrance on the, the rock he was standing on, but I assume that's more just as here's how he got to where he's standing right now. It didn't seem like it was connected to anything. Pretty much. Uh, when we got this far out, we kind of... So here's a, here's a cool thing you might have missed. Take one step in front of the truck and look at the top of the truck bed. Not the truck bed, but the truck uh, cab. Which, Just which... as you're about to enter. Like, right in front of the truck. Here? Yeah, right here. Oh! He's always watching. Well, okay. Hi. I hello. Okay. Just a fun little thing. Did I just glitch the game? Maybe. Are you supposed to be able to get over here? I don't think so, but you did, so good job. Here I am. Welcome to Lisa. We're good at glitching Lisa. Because it seemed like... Yeah. Yeah, you're supposed to just go into the thing when you walk up to it. Yeah, but if you exit the thing, it drops you onto this square, at which point there's nothing stopping you from going to the right. Cool. So Sweet. you just see Brad's there watching at all times. The, the mysticism is somewhat broken, but good to know. And if you approach it from this side, it even goes in. Well, now we've now we've learned a thing. And I'm just gonna go without the mask for a little while, cause uh Buddy seems like a let them come Gimli son of Gloin situation right now, so Still back? And back ish. So I hear the trumpet. Yes. I expect he's somewhere. Not over here. Oh, hey, those are spooky. Oh, I see. Fine, I'll go this way. <laughs> Violence will not be tolerated. What's a pacifist? Good. They'll be easier to kill then. <laughs> Rando, no more. if we're going to be given a moral choice. Apparently. Yeah, no, uh, Buddy's on a warpath. BBB? Oh, here's the, uh, the intro music again. Mm-hmm.
Yeah, take that, you stupid pacifist. Take that, pacifism. Hey, you got some fancy... I also found out that if you hold the right shift key for eight seconds, it starts up a different sticky keys-like thing. Oh my god. So now I have to use the left shift key to prevent that from happening. <laughs> You're playing this game in the most uncomfortable way. I don't even have a D-pad. It's suitable. <laughs> yeah, no, this game has been interesting. I don't even have a D-pad. I have to turn numlock off and use my 10 key. Nice. That's just, my laptop is old and the left arrow on my D-pad doesn't work anymore. I do Trilby's Notes the same way. In fact, I was a little concerned going into Trilby's Notes that I wouldn't be able to play it. And that's how I found out you can use your 10 key as a D-pad. I see. Oh, that was green. It didn't bleed. He was dead, though, so I don't care. So killing the pacifists gives you fancy perfume. I close my eyes and seize it. I clench my fist and beat it. I'm thinking of this as a theater person, right? And if this amount of technical fuckery happened on stage... It oh would God, be no! It would be a ma it would be a disaster. Yeah, absolutely. The the upside to that is when I'm on stage, I can I have control over things. They're not powered by magical internet fucking. Yeah. No, ISPs are just fucking bridge trolls. Um, I don't understand ISP at all. Well, have you ever uh, have you ever dealt with a drug dealer? Same principle. You divide up turf, you don't step on each other's toes. No, I'm serious. Because, um... <laughs> That's a really funny question to ask somebody. You ever, dealt with you ever deal with any drug dealers? 